Hello, welcome to Chemistry Travels. So today we are going to look into the third part of chemical kinetics where we will be dealing with half-life of a reaction and also certain ways in which we can determine the order of a reaction. Okay, so firstly half-life. What is half-life? Half-life is the time that is required for a reaction to be half complete. That is, if I have a reactant A which gets converted to some product P, I can say that half-life is the time in which the reaction proceeds halfway through or if the initial concentration of the reactant at time t equal to 0, that is initially, if the concentration of the reactant is some value A0, I can say that half-life is the time in which the concentration of the reactant becomes half of its initial concentration. That is, at time t half, the concentration of the reactant is A0 by 2. It is half of the initial concentration. Okay. Now, let's predict the half-life for zero-order and first-order reactions. So, for this, we have to use the integrated rate law, which we saw in the previous video. And for a zero-order reaction, we found that the integrated rate law can be written as rate constant k equal to initial concentration minus final concentration by the time. Right, that is A0 minus A by T. And we saw that at we need to find the T half, half-life. And we saw that at half-life, the concentration will reduce to A0 by 2. So, the final concentration will be A0 by 2. So, what we have to do is simply substitute A0 by 2 as the final concentration and find out the T half. That is, this implies we can say that K equal to A0 minus that final concentration A becomes A0 by 2. Right, A0 by 2 and divided by this time is the t half now for us, right. Okay, and now let's just cross multiply and solve this to get the final t half value. So, when we do that, we get t half equal to a naught minus a naught by 2, that is also again a naught by 2, right. And this k comes down, so this is the equation of half-life for a zero-order reaction. T half is A0 by 2K. Okay. Now, moving on to the first-order reaction. So, for the first-order reaction, from the integrated rate law, we saw that K equal to 2.303 by T log A0 by A. Right. Now, similarly, we put time as T half and the final concentration A as A0 by 2. So, when we do that, we get K equal to 2.303 by t log of a0 by a0 by 2. Okay. Now, this a0 by a0 by 2, when we cancel out the common a0, this comes out as log 2, right? That is, this portion would come out as log 2, okay? So, this is k equal to 2.303 into log 2 by t and substituting the value of log 2 that is 0 0.301, we will get this value of 2.303 into the value of log 2 that will come out as 0 0.693 and this was the t half, time was t half, right? And if I cross multiply, I like if I bring this t half to the top and take the k down, I can say that my t half equal to 0 0.693 by k. Okay, right. So, this is the half-life equation for a first order reaction. Clear? And now let's look into the half-life for an nth order reaction. That is, we have a reaction Na giving product P we can write the differential rate equation as minus dA by dt equal to k into concentration of A power n and where n is the order of the reaction. And if we integrate this within the limits time 0 to t and concentration changing from A0 to the final concentration A upon integration, we found that the rate law, integrated rate law for the nth order reaction came out to be kt equal to 1 by n minus 1 
into 1 by final concentration raised to n minus 1 minus 1 by initial concentration raised to n minus 1. So, this was the integrated rate law and we saw that this cannot be applied to the first order reactions that is n cannot be equal to 1 but can be any other value. Anyways, from this equation we are going to find out the half life for nth order reaction. So, for that all we have to do is substitute T as T half and A will turn out to be half of the reactant concentration that it is it will be A naught by 2. So, put those values there. So, K into T half will be equal to 1 by n minus 1 into 1 by A will turn out to be A naught by 2 and this will be raised to n minus 1 minus the remaining portion that is 1 by A naught into n minus 1. So, now this 1 by A naught raised to n minus 1 is there common in this side and this side. So, we can take that out common and solve the remaining part and finally after solving all that rearranging everything we can write T half equal to 2 raised to n minus 1 minus 1 and in the denominator this k also I am taking it to the right side. So, this will be k into n minus 1 into and the common a naught raised to n minus 1 that we took out that will be there. So, it is t half equal to 2 power n minus 1 minus 1 by k multiplied by n minus 1 multiplied by a naught raised to n minus 1 and this is the half life for any nth order reaction ok clear. Now, let us move on to the next topic that is certain methods for determining the order of a reaction and I will be discussing three different methods and the first one is what we learned right now which is half life of a reaction. Using that half life we are going to predict the order of a reaction ok. So, we already saw that T half has an equation of this form we saw that now for finding the value of n we have to consider two different experiments. For a particular order reaction we are performing two different experiments that is at two different initial concentrations A1 and another experiment is conducted at concentration A2. So, their corresponding T halves would be T half of 1 and T half of 2. We do not know what the value of n is. So, for the nth order reaction we can write it in this form with A1 and T half 1, A2 and T half 2. Now, we need to divide these two reaction, uh, these two sets that is for first one by second one I am dividing. So, all these common terms 2 power n minus 1, n minus 1 k all these common terms would get cancelled off and finally, I would just have this as t half of 1 by t half of 2 would be a 2 raised to n minus 1 by a 1 raised to n minus 1. Since the power is common I can also write it as a 2 by a 1 raised to n minus 1. Now, we need to find the value of n, but this n is in the power form. So, we have to bring it down so that we can easily find it. So, for that we are just taking logarithm here, log on this side as well as that side. So, it is a natural log that I am considering that is ln. So, when I take log on this side, this com comes out to be as ln of t half of 1 by t half of 2. Now, that is equal to I am going to take log rhythm here also. So, this comes out to be ln of a 2 by a 1 raised to n minus 1. Now, we saw that log of x power y log of x power y can be written as y log x we already saw that in our first video right. So, here similarly this n minus 1 will come down. So, what can we write? I can say that ln of t half of 1 by t half of 2. Now, that is equal to n minus 1 into ln of a 2 by a 1 ok or simplifying I can write it as n minus 1 equal to ln of t half of 1 by t half of 2 and this ln part I am taking it down. So, this comes out to be divided by ln of a 2 by a 1 ok. So, when we perform the experiment at two different initial concentrations we get two different 
half lives and from that we can find the value of the order n using this particular equation. This is the half life method. Okay. The second method for determining the order of a reaction is using the differential rate equation that we saw in our part 1 video. That is rate equal to k into concentration of A power n. And using this equation, there are two different ways in which we can find the value of n. That is either we can plot a graph or we can conduct the experiment twice and similar to the half-life method, we can get two equations, divide them and get the value of n. Okay. So the first one is using graph. That is, we have this equation and to get uh, we take the log of it so ln r would be equal to ln of k into concentration of a power n taking log on both sides now ln of x into y can be written as ln x plus ln y we already saw that in the equations so this also can be splitted as ln k plus ln of a power n the two different terms can be separately written with the addition symbol okay right now here also, again we can split it like ln of x power y was y ln x. So, this portion again I am going to simplify. So, finally, ln of r becomes equal to n ln a plus this ln k. Now, this is of the form y equal to mx plus c. This equation is similar to the form y equal to mx plus c with y being ln r, x being ln a. So, if I plot a graph between x and y, I will be getting a straight line. This equation is the equation for a straight line graph, right? So, when I plot this ln r versus ln a graph, I will get a straight line and the slope of the graph is this value, m is the slope of the graph and that in our equation, if you compare and see, the slope is n. So, plot the graph, get the slope of it and that will be equal to the order of your reaction. Now, the second method is by performing the experiment twice. That is, so when you perform it once, R1 will be equal to K into some concentration A1 power N and R2 will be K into concentration of A2 power N. Two different co initial concentrations we are taking, we are finding the rate. Now, we are dividing these two reactions. So, R1 by R2 will be A1 by A2 power N. Now, to get N from the power, we have to bring it down. So, for that, we just have to take log on both sides. And upon rearranging, I will get my n value, the order to be ln of r1 by r2 by ln of a1 by a2. So, I can use this equation and find the value of n. Okay. And the last method is using the integral rate expression or the integrated rate loss. Okay. So, for each of the reactions like zero order reaction, first order reaction, second order and all, they have certain characteristic plots. So, when we perform an experiment and plot the graph, if that looks similar to any of these graphs from that we can identify which order is the reaction okay so first for zero order reaction we can say that rate of the reaction is minus dA by dt that is equal to k and it is independent of the concentration of the reactant right rate is independent of concentration and what can we understand if it is independent of concentration it means that it is independent of time also so, because concentration is changing with time and since rate is independent of concentration, rate is independent of time as well. So, for zero order reaction, if I plot a graph between rate versus time, the graph would be just a constant line and rate would remain constant and this uh, intercept of the graph would be this value k. Okay. So, if I perform any experiment and plot a graph between rate versus time and the graph comes out to be a constant like this, I can say that my reaction was a zero order reaction. Okay. Next is the integrated rate expression for zero order that is k equal to a naught minus a by t. If I rearrange this equation slightly, I can say that a equal to minus kt plus a naught and this is of the form y equal to mx plus c. Right. With y being the final concentration a and x being the time t. So, when I plot a graph of a versus t, the graph is equation is for a straight line. So, it is a straight line, but I am having a negative slope, slope equal to minus k. My m value is minus k. So, which means that my graph would be pointing downwards, and that is why I have a graph, a straight line coming downwards. So, the slope of the graph is minus k and the intercept value is the initial concentration A0. So, if when I perform experiment and plot graph between concentration A and time t, if I get a graph which is a straight line that is coming downwards, I can say that the order of the reaction is zero order. Okay.
And finally, we have the first order reaction. So for first order reaction, rate equal to K into concentration of A. That is rate is dependent on the concentration of the reactant. So as concentration changes with time, rate also changes. So we can say that rate is dependent on time as well. And if you we plot a graph between rate versus time for first order reactions, it would be an exponentially decreasing graph like this. Using the same equation, if I plot a graph between rate and concentration, then it would be a straight line which starts from the origin with slope being equal to this k. So these two graphs have come from this equation. Now if I use the integrated rate expression for first order, in terms of ln, the equation was kt equal to ln of initial concentration by final concentration, ln a0 by a. Now if I rearrange this, because this ln of x by y is ln x minus ln y. So similarly, ln of a0 by a is ln a0 minus ln a. So I can open this up and I can rearrange to get this particular equation where ln a equal to minus kt plus ln of a0. Now this is somewhat similar to what we saw for zero order except that the concentrations have ln in their terms. Okay. Now if I plot a graph between ln a and time, ln a versus t time, graph would be a straight line that is declining, uh, with, that's going down because the slope is negative, slope equal to minus k and the intercept is ln of a0. And also for first order we had another equation in terms of log where ln was replaced as 2.303 log. So this equation can be written as kt equal to 2.303 log of a0 by a. Now if I plot a graph between log a0 by a versus time, the graph would be a straight line starting from the origin because there is no intercept and the slope of the graph would be k by 2.303. So from, if we get perform experiment and get any of these graphs, then we can say that the reaction that we performed was first order. Okay. So this is the last method for determining the order of the reaction and with this we end today's video. I hope you understood this concept that was discussed today and thank you so much.